Hello and welcome to this week's Faith and Friends. We are excited to share another great week with you. We're now well into the month of June. Vacation Bible schools are going to full four summer vacations. We hope you're enjoying your month so far. And we're back here in the studio after last week in Delphus eating a huge amount of ice cream. <laughs> yeah, where is that ice cream? Can we get another installment? Isn't that a weekly thing in the summer? I still want to know what that Buckeye parfait tasted like. You were tasted just- Tasted like Buckeyes. Mm. I Nothing wouldn't better. know. Yeah, absolutely. Coming up in today's show, we're going to take you to Southeast Asia to catch up with a local man who is now in his 16th year of impacting people for Christ. Also, a brand new season at the Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert has been unveiled. Looking forward to seeing that. Over in Kenton, we'll have all the dogs there with a brand new place to get some exercise thanks to the vision of a 10-year-old girl. But first, some scripture to get our show headed in the right direction. Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. What a great reminder that is to us to always be looking to God and looking at what his direction is for our personal lives. So easy to look at others and say, oh, you should be doing this or do this better. But we need to be focusing in on what we need to be doing for God first. And then out of that can flow goodness and mercy and grace. Well, sometimes that might mean going to city council and asking for permission to do something. Hmm. What would you like to do, Jennifer? I've stumped her. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, I know what a 10 year old girl is interested in doing. We're going to tell you about that in just a moment, because in reality, every one of us has responsibility to position ourselves in the right direction, whether that means taking a responsibility in civic action, being involved in your church, being more of a family person. There's a lot of truth to being on the right path, both spiritually and emotionally. But it also matters how we position ourselves physically, hmm. how we travel, where we go, even how we place our feet. Well, from something very serious and deep to something a bit, well, less serious. Let's focus on the straight and narrow. And it turns out there's something in Kenton that isn't designed to keep humans on the straight path, though that is vital. Rather, this is for the dogs, literally. Matt Finkel has more. Thanks, Mark. Kenton resident Maddie Kugel received a dog for Christmas, which is, of course, exciting for any young girl. But when the weather turned, she soon realized that she didn't have a place to take her puppy to play outdoors. The precocious 10-year-old came up with a solution, and it didn't take her long to turn her idea into reality. I wanted a dog party, so my grandma said if I got a dog for Christmas, I can have one. And, but there's really no fenced-in area where I can have, the, like, let them off the leash. So I thought, why not have one here in town? And the Kenton Dog Park in Wharton Park was born. With the help of her grandma, Maddie acted quickly. She raised $2,000 so far, and thanks to Proctor and Gamble volunteers, the park has fencing and an obstacle course is being constructed. My grandma said, do you want to come with me to a parks and recreation meeting? And I said, yeah. And my mom said I could. And so I did go, told them my idea, and they liked it. So next I went to a council meeting, and they liked it too. She went to Park and Recreation, then she went to City Council, which I said on that, and then she went to Humane Society, and she's been all around talking to people, that Business and Alliance, and um, banks. She's went all kinds of places. There's still more money to be raised, about $6,000 worth, but Procter & Gamble has helped expedite the process. I love seeing that this idea came from a 10-year-old who had a dream, and knowing that she's my child, it makes me feel really blessed just to know that other girls can see her and see that she's on the right path um, through being a Christian and through like keeping her grades up in school and stuff. And just knowing that at 10, there was no way I could have taken a project like this on. So it makes me feel really good that she's able to do it and that she's followed through step by step. It blesses me because if she can do this at 10, you know, what is she going to do when she's 21, when she's older? You know, there's, there's nothing that she can't do. Faith is an important part of Maddie's life, and she has seen the ways that God has helped her as her idea comes to life. God has really blessed us. We like pray like almost every day, and um, it happened. Through all of this, we've just said that this is a God thing, and that we believe that we're gonna just like do prayer that all things are possible with God. So. We still have quite a ways to go, even though the fence is up, we still have quite a ways to go um, for donations and things like that. But we're believing that God's going to see us through to the end. I'm really proud of her because she's only 10 years old and she's really shy. 
and this has pushed her. And doing this today, she kept saying, Grandma, what am I going to say? I'm scared. I said, you'll do fine. And she said, well, I know that God's helping me because he's helped me do it this far. He'll help me get raise the rest of the money to pay for it. And Procter & Gamble said that they wanted to come in and put the the um, logistic things in for the dogs and then they were going to plant shrubs and do all kinds of stuff and she said God's doing it isn't he so yeah it's exciting. Bark Park as Maddie has named it is coming along nicely but there's still work to be done. $2,000 has already been raised and you can donate to the dog park project at Quest Bank in Kenton or call Maddie directly at 567-295-0109 to make a contribution. There will also be a Dog Days of Summer fundraiser on July 12th at 4 p.m. in the park, and all are encouraged to attend. Well, it was just a few weeks ago, and Northwest Ohio was well represented at the state track and field meet in Columbus. LCC boys taking first as a team in their division, and many local athletes finding their way to the medal stand. One of those such athletes was Tenora senior Tori Abdul, who placed her way to four first place medals. In between races, Tori could be seen wearing a bright pink shirt with the words For God on the front. During a post-race interview, Jennifer inquired about the phrase on the shirt, and here's what Tori told her. God saved me, and through track, he has brought me through a lot of ruts, and I've used track to get out of those ruts. And so I run for God, and because he has given me so much, I try to give him the glory. You know, it really didn't quite, it, great information from her right there, great, great testimony. But then I talked with her more later, and she talked about her many years in foster care mm. and the struggles that she's been through and just how God has used running to basically free her from so much of that. It was just inspiring to see the smile on her face. She was a really neat person to meet. Made uh, that, sat, that hot Saturday a lot of fun. I heard one comment afterwards from a parent saying, Tori said, to them or said to a reporter that the best thing about track and field is she finally has a dad. Her coach kind of embracing mm -hmm. that. Pretty special story. Hey Tori, if you're out there, if you know Tori, because I haven't seen her since then, I just want to let you know you inspired me. I'm praying for you and I really look forward to seeing what God does with you in your life. Well, Tori's not the only local athlete willing to share how Jesus has had an impact in all he or she does, including more than just running. Lincoln View's Bailey Toe with a sixth place race finish in his race at the state meet. He talks about the impact of scripture and devotions in his home. Uh, it's a big part. My grandma was always feeding me scriptures and stuff before races and my family we do devotion times and stuff at night which is really key and it's definitely something that helps settle down the nerves and stuff. Just trust he's going to be with you every step of the way. So. Another inspiring racer there and an opportunity coming up for you to interact with athletes of all eras and several different sports at the Legends of Northwest Ohio event coming up July 13th right here in Lima. Tickets are $30. There's only about 500 available. Athletes to appear on site include William White, Zach Dysert, Keith Wenning, Gray Horn, Kyle Miller, and many more. Reserve a table for eight or purchase individual tickets by contacting our, our own friend here, Andy, Andy Lynch. <laughs> at fca.org. And Andy, what's going to be so special about this event? There are multiple facets to it. We're doing a training session from 4 to 5.30 with Allie Clifton and Rocket Ishmael and Jordan Thompson where they'll build into the lives of some of uh, the FCA leaders we'll have in the fall, both high school and college. And then we would like businesses to, to sponsor tables so that teams can come and be ministered to by all these great panels telling stories of faith and telling how they persevered through tough times in high school and in college to get to different levels of sports. It's going to be an encouraging evening for, for lots of youth in the area. That's really what we want to build into, but also it is available to adults to come as well. So we're excited for the event coming up on that Sunday. You know, studies show that sports heroes are among the top um, top influencers. And in, thank you, top influencers hmm. of the young people. So to see a group who not only have been successful in sports, but are willing to stand up for their faith. It's so important. Yeah, we're excited to hear what they have to say. All right. Well, for all you sports fans, now here's how your schedule could look on July 13th <laughs> at the Legends of Northwest Ohio in the evening, but start your day with this. Brock Mueller speaking at Church in the Park at Forest Gormley Park. Pastor Ken Gray says this is going to be a really inspiring event after a horrific car accident. Then OSU student Mueller was given a 1% chance of ever walking again but you want to come to Church in the Park to see what God's mm. other plans just were. So that's Church in the Park in Forest, July 13th at 10.30 a.m. And then 
Head over to Legends of Northwest Ohio at UNH Events Center at 6. Great story by Mueller yeah. and how his brother up in Michigan really came together and the Wolverine community really mm -hmm. embraced him. Yeah, he, he had an inspirational, um, after he was given that 1% chance to walk, he actually walked out onto the field at Michigan Stadium wearing that 1% shirt and just, mm -hmm. it, just a, in a fantastic story that you don't want to miss at the church in the park. Hmm. Wow, that's great. Well, the Great Commission is a constant reminder that God is calling his people to go out. For some, that means going out in the neighborhood, maybe another state, but for others, it could be all the way around the world. Such was the case for Lima's Chuck Bertling, who 16 years ago made his first trip to Asia in a ministry capacity. Chuck was recently back to the United States for the first time in more than two years. He spends days investing in the lives of children who live in the garbage dumps of Thailand and other southeastern Asian regions. Listen to Chuck talk about how he's seen these kids' lives grow so much, as well as a challenge he issues to you and me. I have a 12-year-old boy. His name is Ake. It's A-K. That's his name. And he's just so genius. This, this kid does all of our work. All, all of the, he does the setup for the program. On Saturday morning, he does the teardown, he does the wiring, he does the sound on the, on the soundboard, he, he does it all. And uh, he's 12 years old. It's, it's, it's amazing and I, I, I can't say enough that what we're there to do is to change a generation of children, to change that thinking that, that it, and, 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 and it's not Buddhist or Hindu or, or Muslim or, or Christian, it's it's not about the the name of the the person. It's it's about the way they live. Buddhists don't live like Christians. Uh, Hindus don't live like Christians. Muslims don't live like Christians. Christians are the only ones that live like Christians. And these children are learning how to live through what they see in us. They have never met a God that loved them. They only know about these gods that they're supposed to love. But they don't answer them. And our God, Jesus Christ, he answers these kids. They, they see the changes. They see the prayers being answered. And our three kids, they go around, they pray for other kids. They actually go around and pray for other kids. When kids, kids come to them and say, I'm sick or I'm hurt, we'll pray for you. But they learn that through discipleship, through walking with us every day. That's what we're there for. And to train others to do it too. 16 years is the point where you can start seeing that next generation. That's neat. We in the United States have such a need to be training young people so we also can change that generation. How are you seeing this, what's going to be the next generation potentially living different lives because they have spent the last decade having that opportunity to witness what it means to be a Christian. The first thing that I noticed, Jennifer, is that these kids are having kids. But the kids they're having, they're bringing to kids' church. Now that says, that, that speaks volumes to me, that they know the place where their children should grow up and they know how they should be even if their parents messed up, they still know what's right. And instead of taking them to the temple, they bring them to kids' church. So that's, that's a really big deal. That's one of the things, I hope that's a, a good answer to what you're saying. Uh, another thing is, the kids that, that we're training now are, are children who have dreams. That's that's something that so many kids don't have. They just don't have purpose. They have no idea what that even would be like to have goals outside of the garbage dump or, uh, or, or away from a, a real poor and slum-like life. Their parents' parents grew up in the slums and their parents grew up in the slums and now their children are growing up in the slums. And, and everybody's still in the slums, except for some of our kids are getting out of the slums now. And they've got dreams. They've got ambitions. And those things, I believe with all my heart, are coming from God. 
More from Chuck next week on Faith and Friends. Well, the official announcement has been made. Nice Wonger Performing Arts Center's 2014-2015 season has now been released. Dancy talks with Paul Haverman and Taffy Stober, and there are some headlining names you surely won't want to miss. Well, thank you so much. It is always my pleasure to talk to our next two guests, and um, they are Paul Haverman and Taffy Stober with the Nice Wonger Performing Arts Center in Van Wert. And we always run out of time, so I, w I guess we better get right, get to, right to it. it. We yeah. are talking about the 2014 15 season. That is so hard to believe. It's amazing. Seven, yeah. seven and a half years we've been in operation. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. And you get bigger and better every year, don't you? Well, Definitely. we certainly get bigger and we hope we get better. Definitely. Yeah. I know that yeah. you just had West Side Story, which was a hit for Mother's Day weekend. And um, we are looking ahead to our next season. And um, we're going to talk about the holidays, actually, as part of this. But what, mm -hmm. what do you have on tap? Well, we... Uh, we're actually going to start our season uh, very early on, at least, with a group that I think uh, all your viewers are going to really enjoy, the Annie Moses Band. Oh, good, yeah. yes. I think I've seen them on your, on your I'm channel sure here you many have. times. Yep. Yeah. And they are coming when? Uh, they are coming October 4th. That's a Saturday night. When you talk about the season, how does that um, actually play out, and when can you actually begin to buy the tickets for the season? We unveil our season June 11th, and okay. then the tickets will go on sale on the end of June for those who are purchasing Grand Series. And if you purchase the Grand Series, you get every event, you get a 20% discount on those tickets. Okay. Then you can purchase Select Series. If you want to get three or more events, that's your best deal, is to bundle those together and purchase them, get a 15% discount on three or more events. Okay. And so, Paul, you were talking about um, the Annie Moses Band, mm -hmm. but that's just one of many uh, that we're going to have to choose from. It's going to be one of about 30, Oh, probably. my golly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to all be quite busy throughout the year. Okay. Uh, we come back very quickly after that with a number of other ones, but then one that I know a lot of your people will know again again is uh, Ernie Haas. Yeah, sure. Signature sound, but they're coming in wrapped in a different package this year. It's called The Inspiration of Broadway, and they're oh. adding a guy named Mark McVeigh. Now, any of your Broadway people will know. I was say that name is Mark familiar. McVeigh was Jean Valjean on Les Mis oh. in London. Oh. And so Inspiration of Broadway, Ernie Haas, Signature Sound, all his groups, they add Mark McVeigh oh with the group, goodness. and they're using all inspirational songs from Broadway. So, oh, it'll be a beautiful yeah, show. Yeah, that'll be Incredible, and something different. You know, Ernie right. Haas and Signature Sound has been in the area, but they're singing new songs, and they they blend amazingly. Oh, so. That's something yeah. to look at. And that's on October 18th. Okay. So Very it's in the good. fall. So then we get into the winter months. Um, we don't even like to think about that <laughs> at this point, but we, we have to. We just left it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, so what do we have there? Well, we talk about November. I think Taffy wants to talk about some dogs. Absolutely. Oh. The Olati dogs come before Christmas season comes, and they want America's Got Talent. So they've been on the Vegas stage for some time, and now those dogs are touring the country and they're going to come to Van Wert, Ohio on November 11th. Oh, so that will be dog a show lot of fun, definitely. Mm -hmm. yes. That was a show that just came through and, and we thought we had the season pretty well set. And then, then I saw these latte, latte dogs, and I thought, oh, man, yep. we need to try to slide them in somewhere. We are running with the big yeah. dogs this year. <laughs> that's right. And we, and we got them on a Saturday, so that's great. Oh, good. Yeah. That's definitely one for the entire family. Uh, I'm sure it will be. There is a lot of family shows this season, diverse things, not yeah. just music, which is really neat because they can be exposed to so many different types of performing arts this season. Very so. good. Yeah. Very good. And then we're going to get back to um, something. Yeah, Christmas. Yeah. But this is going to be something new for our area. Well, really. it is. I, and, and before I mention what I think you're talking about, okay. we, we want to mention that we are going to have a Nutcracker Oh, okay, year. good. So I know people always want to get yes. a Nutcracker in for their holiday season. A so. lot of dance troops in our area that enjoy going. Yeah, yes. December 6th uh, on a uh, Saturday, we're going to have the uh, Ballet Theater of Toledo coming. Okay. And they'll involve a lot of local dancers, and yeah. it's a live orchestra that'll be with us. So two Nutcracker performances on that Saturday. Okay. But what I think you're talking about is uh, the Holiday Ice Spectacular. Yes. Yeah. Our stage at the Nice Wonger is going to turn into an ice rink. Actually, it's made of Teflon, but it's a whole, it's an ice arena, and they're going to be dancers with characters and all kinds of things, and, and world-class skaters that'll be there. And you know, back 
in my day when I was a little one back in the 1800s, you know, we <laughs> would bring in. Right. No, right. it's true, but that was that was one of those events that we looked forward to as a yeah. family, as a holiday on ice, yeah. Yeah. you know. And, and it's rocket style. I mean, it yeah. is glitz and glamour, and it's a beautiful show, beautiful show from beginning to end. So. I'm sure we'll be able to show the viewers a clip of that so okay. they can see. Yeah. Very good. Well, we are out of time. And mm. so. Um, and we didn't even get to talk about Barbara Eden and Hal Linden. No. Or better coming. yet, Newsboys. God's right. not news dead. Boys. Those That's news right. boys are coming. Yes. See? So, yep, we've got, we've got a In lot March. to talk about. In yes, March. and I'm yeah. sure you'll be back um, yes. before yeah. then. So, yeah. um, well, all the best to you both, Paul and Taffy, and thank you again for joining us. Thanks, thank you Nancy. very much. All Always right. good to be here. Back to you. Well, thanks, Dancy. Certainly a great lineup for the coming season. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. That's just one of the many things the Bible and Proverbs has to say about the tongue. In his latest teaching, Bill Harris talks about the power we have to affect change in our everyday lives by the things that we say. And he challenges us with the responsibility we have to speak life into our world. All right, Bill, I'm going to throw a fact out here for you from a university study, I believe in California, mm -hmm. studying the use of words, suggesting that both male and female come relatively close, but using, we use 16,000 words within a day, the average wow. male or female. And so we're talking about words and specifically the tongue today, yeah. which is something the Bible talks a lot about. Mm -hmm. the, the tongue is a very powerful thing. It has the power of life and death. And uh, I, I liken it to this. We are made in the likeness and image, image of God. When he created the world, he spoke it into existence by wor words. I, I contend that you and me as Christians, we can speak our world into existence by words. When we say positive things, it sets out forces to bring those things to, to, to pass. And I don't mean it in a spooky sense, hmm. but we can create our own positive atmosphere by the positive things we say. We can create our own negative attitude by the negative things that we say. So we create our world and it is very important. In fact, it is a responsibility we have to make sure that the words coming out of our mouths are positive and are pure. Well, of course, the Proverbs talks a lot about the tongue as well as the rest of the Bible. Jesus said that we will be uh, justified and or condemned by our own words. And there is sometimes where we focus on words and speaking positively and making sure that the words coming out are, are appropriate and positive. But you kind of focus more on the fact, like you mentioned, you can cause change. You can affect change sure. in life through your words. Uh, obviously, because uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. Mm -hmm. And when the Word of God is spoken, it generates faith in us and it, it also generates the faith for us to say positive things about our future so that we can pursue those things and we have a mindset and a mental attitude toward, uh, toward the positive rather than the negative. Uh, conversely, I think when you look at the negative side, I've often said in my marriage seminars, if you keep telling a child he's bad, he won't disappoint you. <laughs> he's <laughs> going to go that route, right, you know. Yeah. So we have to speak positive, in, positive things into people's lives. Well, of course, the word also tells us that a, a soft answer turns away wrath. Yes. And you touch on that as well and kind of go into the effects of maybe causing wrath or causing discord, as you mm -hmm. say. The positive words uh, are great. When we go negative, it creates wrath, and the, the word wrath means heat. Mm -hmm. And what happens very often is we, we fail to realize that when we speak something, we can't take it back hmm. if we said something negative. And now there's this, there can be unforgiveness and bitterness, and that can have physical effects. When we're harboring that, un, that, that unforgiveness because of something that was said to us and we're gonna get back by harboring it, it can affect us physically with sickness. It can affect us spiritually because we know that God's forgiveness is, of us is contingent upon our forgiveness hmm. of others. And so it creates distance between us and God. Emotional effects can be the bitterness and anger, and the mental effects can be low self-esteem. Oh, yes. Wow. Well, and it seems like I don't have a statistic for this fact, <laughs> but it seems, too, that it's just almost contagious that once we begin to buy in and speak negatively and buy into those negative thoughts, and if we're told and spoken to us negative things mm -hmm. often, it's almost contagious in that it kind of blurs and snowballs into something bigger. It does. It's, it's, it becomes cancerous, mm -hmm. Zach. And it, it, when a mom says, your dad's no good, the kid grows up to believe his dad's no good. Right. Then when he gets to be a grown adult, he tells his kid, your grandkids, your granddaughter's no, no good, you know? Mm -hmm. And it just goes on from generation to generation. You got to break the cycle. 
with positive things that we say um, so that we can create a, a better world in our Christian environment. And when we look at the words of Christ, look at how he addressed different situations. There were times where he could have rebuked or where he could have scorned people. The woman at the well who had been in marriage five times, mm -hmm. now living common law with a man, he didn't put that woman down. He didn't condone what she was doing, mm -hmm. but he didn't put her down. That's the woman right. at the the woman who touched his garment, who had um, been seeking help through medical doctors and the like, that woman had no right to be there because she was unclean. He didn't put her down for that. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah. And so if we look at the fact 16,000 or however many thousand words we use in oh, a day, yeah. Yeah. they can seem so small, the words can, but they can have big, there's big proportions there. And you yes. mentioned the nation of Israel being split over this exact matter. Isn't that something? When uh, Jer um, Jeroboam, I believe is his name, uh, when he took over after his father Solomon passed away, the older, wiser uh, men surrounding his father advised him to soften up on the people of Israel. Mm -hmm. He says, no, I'm going to be harder. He followed the advice of the younger guys and he became harder. And when he became harsh like that, it split the nation. So you had one powerful nation that split up into two weaker nations mm -hmm. who eventually were overtaken by their enemies. Just a reminder that you can hear more about this topic starting Sunday here on TV 44, and you can watch Update with Bill Harris every Sunday at 1.30 and Thursdays at 9 a.m. Mark? Well, thank you, Zach. Auction time's approaching, and now is the time to bring in your donations. Large items are even small enough to fit into a manila envelope. And do you know what this says on here? Pop-tarts. Yes, because I can read. Food gift cards. I was close. Ah, we do not let Andy have touched this. I'm not allowed before the auction. The food gift cards. However, a, have you ever been to Wild Willie's? No. I've heard That's some great things Van about Wirt, their right? pizza in Van Wert, okay. and we have a bunch of gift cards for them. Thank right. you very much, Wild Willie's, for your donation. So whether it's uh, big enough to fit into an envelope, or if you need some help bringing it through the door, we'd love to see you with your tax deductible donations in hand, or maybe on a two-wheeled cart as the auction is coming up September the 6th. We're just a little over two months away. You know, a couple weeks ago, we had a birthday party. Well, not you, we, me, we. <laughs> birthday party again. for my Wasn't daughter We're not <laughs> at, <friends>. at <laughs> Marmon Valley Farm. And it was such a fun event. So I have to tell you, I was really excited when Marmon Valley contacted us this past week to say they're donating a mother-daughter, father-daughter, father-son, mother-son weekend at the farm. Can cousins use it? Aunts and uncles? Aunt, yeah, uncle, uncle, nieces, maybe uncle, nieces, that would work. It would. Niece. Well, anyway, a weekend at Marmon Valley Farm, that's going to be part of the auction this year. I'm excited for that. They're actually celebrating their 50th yeah. anniversary ah. this year, which is kind of neat. Look at this. We also have a bunch of items from Duncan. Now, your nieces might like these. Am too. I allowed to look at this? She, they're a little too young for <laughs> Sparkly bags. They're wrapped up, though. Can they I open are. the gift? Well, sure oh, you and can. Now we got the box. I'm going to have trouble putting this all back together the correct way. Look at that. Very you know, nice. that is one of three different bracelets that they gave. Each one is a different, there's like a copper color, a white gold, and then regular gold. We've got, oh, I don't know if we can be able to see this at all. I can see it fine. You see Looks that? very nice. Look at that. Nice jewelry, nice necklace. Of course, that's just some of the jewelry. We'll be getting a lot more. But we, we would love to get some donations from you as well. We love the new things, but mm -hmm. we really love the antique furniture and all that stuff. Yeah, ha had a nice uh, small kitchenette, uh, maybe a breakfast nook uh, table and chairs that came in that I know uh, some folks have already been eyeing in the studio. <laughs> you can bring your auction donations to TV44 right here on Beatty Road, Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. And for more information, you can call 419-339-4444 or just tweet Jennifer what items you have and she'll list them. I'll be happy to <laughs> accept those and look forward to you being a part of the auction. We want volunteers as well. Fun, fun mm. day. Consider being a part of that September 6th. Well, the 52-week Church Prayer Connection is still underway. 52 area churches that have pledged to pray for TV44 at least one week out of the year, and we have promised to do the same for them. And this week, we're praying for Cable Road Alliance Church here in Lima. Cable Road located at 2264 North Cable Road and there's their phone number, 419-331-5500. We're very thankful, not only for Cable Road itself, but for those who attended. And we want you to know that we are praying for you. My girls go to Awana there. So during the school year, every Wednesday night, <laughs> and it's such a 
really great group of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got some friends that attend there as well. A great college ministry that they've got going on. They're the Journey is what it's called on, mm -hmm. I think it's Tuesday nights. Well, before we close out our time, we want to take a moment to pray for some of your prayer requests. We just mentioned we are praying for Cable Road Alliance Church this week and encourage you to do the same. Also, pray for memory, says one of our viewers, and comprehension. Also, we hear this one a lot. Please pray for the salvation of family members. You know, constantly there is just that burden. Specifically this week, we heard from people requesting for prayer for some granddaughters and for a son. One viewer was also the recent victim of theft mm. and asked for a repentant heart of the person who committed the crime and also an ability to trust others. You know, I, 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 I'm, somebody broke into our house once, stole a computer, all my jewelry, and it was hard to trust after that. I was, there's a lot of fear that can come in from that situation. Sure. Let's take a moment now and lift those in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and just ask for your hand of healing. Uh, there's so many folks out there that uh, need that healing. Just pray for wisdom and discernment for the doctors and the medical care, Lord, and pray for revival, revival in this country and uh, revival in the hearts of, uh, of so many, Lord. And just uh, we, we ask for these specific uh, folks uh, for healing, uh, physical and mental healing, and uh, for the, the granddaughter, Lord. And just in, in all these, uh, finally, I also want to lift up Cable Road Church as well, Alliance Church, for, for all they have done. Just continue to bless that ministry. In your name we pray. Amen. Finally, today we'll leave you with our scripture from the day, Proverbs 4, 25 through 27. Headed in the right direction, let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Remove your foot from evil. Some good things to think about as we focus leaving you with these very thoughts to remove our feet from evil. Keep your eyes looking straight ahead on Jesus as our prize and know that wherever you've been in life, it's never too far gone for Jesus to welcome you right back. In fact, he loves you right now, just the way you are, no matter what's going on, and we do as well. So we thank you for joining us here on Faith and Friends. Have a great week, everyone.